Attorney for the Middle District of Georgia, Michael Moore, and defense attorney and former federal prosecutor, Shan Wu. Good to see both of you. Uh, Michael, you first. Uh, you know, we, we heard a lot of the arguments coming from um, the, the couple's defense uh, attorneys about why they didn't turn themselves in. But the fact that it took a tip uh, to police to end up finding them inside a warehouse, uh, how much does that hurt their case as they defend themselves against the notion of evading arrest? You know, and I'm glad to be with you. Thanks for the invitation. Um, I, I think that uh, it, it will hurt them in the long run to, to make it look like that they were not cooperative or that they may have been trying to, to leave. At the same time, I, I do think, and I, I, this is where the a prosecutor has to really walk a fine line and not conflate the public's right to know information with talking about tactical decisions or strategy decisions that he or she may make in a case. And so, you know, here, I think Wednesday is actually when she announced that she was thinking about charging the parents. So I'm not surprised that this happened. I think yeah. that they didn't have them sufficiently under surveillance. I mean, think about this. You know, the spider never says to the fly, I think I'm going to build a web and maybe catch you. You know, that you, you don't do that. Uh, you, you make that announcement when you have a, an arrest warrant in hand or you have somebody tight on, on the couple. This and I guess that's why it on. is confusing, too. If, if that kind of announcement is going to be made, then why wasn't there some surveillance, uh, you know, of the couple? Well, I think they, they she, she mentioned at one point that they were following pings on a, on a telephone, on some cell phones, but you don't have to do much but watch an episode or two of CSI and, you, and people know to throw their phones out the window or turn them off. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, I didn't find that to be completely uh, uh, mm -hmm. compelling in, in, in the surveillance. Now, having said that, it doesn't mitigate what these individuals are charged with, that mitigate the crime here. It makes me sick every time that we're having more of these cases. I'm, I'm really troubled by it. I, I hope that we'll, we'll have some politicians that will decide we ought to be putting metal detectors in schools doing things like that. I mean, we can build bridges and roads, but if our kids aren't living long enough to drive on them, really, what, what's the point? Hmm. Uh, Shan, um, here's the flip side of the defense attorney's argument uh, that they weren't trying to run because they had already retained an attorney uh, and that that demonstrates they were going to cooperate with prosecutors. What do you say to that? Yeah, I'm not really sure there's a uh, defense to being a fugitive of I retained a counsel. <laughs> uh, that doesn't really work. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to face the consequences for that. I don't know if they're being, you know, charged right now with uh, being fugitives or not. Um, but obviously their behavior, it doesn't look like they're about to turn themselves in. They had an arraignment date mm -hmm. the afternoon before. So, you know, how come you weren't there? Mm -hmm. They're claiming they were afraid for their lives. Uh, it's, uh, if you weren't really worried about your security, turn yourself in, uh, you'll be protected. <laughs> yeah, thus far, at least in the arraignment, uh, in that hearing that we all heard, four uh, counts of involuntary manslaughter. We didn't hear anything about, right, a, a charge about e evading uh, arrest or anything like that. So then, Michael, you know, when, when you look at the totality uh, or the scope of school shootings in recent years, uh, reportedly there have only been about the cases of maybe four, four parents who have actually faced charges as a result of it with their connections to their kids who, you know, uh, allegedly carried out uh, the attacks. Do you see that with this arrest, uh, what's become a very high profile, highly publicized case, do you see that this is a potential turning point in, in culpability uh, when the next you know, incident happens, that these minors, um, you know, that their parents are also being held responsible for any actions that a minor takes? It, it could be. I mean, I, I think there have been cases where uh, parents should have been charged. I think, you know, there are some cases where other folks should have been charged who may could have intervened, too. In this case, only the, the facts will tell as we, as we go forward. You know, it's an interesting sort of a conundrum here because, on the one hand, the, the young man, uh, the shooter, is charged as an adult. And he's, I think he's 15 years old, if I remember yeah. right. And so it, that's basically saying he's, he's facing adult punishment. He has the mentality where to, to commit crimes as an adult and doesn't receive the sort of the shield of the juvenile justice system. Yeah. On the other hand, we're then telling his parents that you should have controlled your, your minor child. So these are arguments that will play out in court. But, but uh, you know, I, I, I think that... Um, we ought to be pushing laws that hold people responsible, uh, good, good gun safety laws. You know, you can be pro-gun and pro-gun safety at the same time. And so hopefully this type of, uh, th this type of case uh, will, will, sh will shine some light on, on, on laws or enhance laws, maybe change some 
policies in other states where, where these, these types of uh, provisions can be effective. Mm. Shan, how do you see it? Yeah, I, I agree with Michael. Uh, laws need to be the solution here. Criminal prosecutions are not a way to make laws. And this is a case which may be morally very strong, but legally I don't think it's so strong. I mean, if the best evidence the prosecutors have is this text from the mom that said, LOL, you know, just don't get caught because he was looking at ammunition, that's not criminal. And really, part of the investigation, I think, needs to look at the school's culpability. Did they question him? Do you have a gun? Did they search his locker, which they can do in a school? So you have to look at that as well as the parents. It's very divisive. I mean, there's a lot of controversy right now with hostility being directed at school boards. Mm -hmm. Obviously, big divide in the country over guns. And in prosecutions, you have to be careful not to let all that understandable emotion sway you in terms of how the mm -hmm. case is prosecuted. It's got to be done on the facts of this case. And right now, from what little we know, I don't think it's that strong of a case against them. Mm. And Shan, you know, the, the uh, prosecution argues that this couple is a flight risk. The judge, you know, set bond at $500,000. Uh, is that adequate? You know, I personally don't like money bonds as security for people. I think you need to evaluate them on the dangerousness of the people. But certainly under the existing laws, they're a flight risk. They had an appointment to show up and they didn't. So they're going to have to, they can revisit that later. Their attorneys can make a further argument. But I think it's the right call at the moment, given that they were on the run and they were found that they're held. Mm -hmm. Michael, you want to add to that last word? Well, I, I think it's, a again, I mean, you've got parents now who have a child that, that are, that's, that's charged with murder that's going to that face his life in prison, you know, because of it. And so the question will be at some point, is, is the judge setting this bond uh, to make a statement? At some point, will it be reduced? It's hard for me to imagine that the court uh, keeps the entire family locked up as people prepare defenses, meet with lawyers, and do those kind of things that are going to be necessary moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are things that you can do like ankle monitoring and all. The the, the cash bond or the, the, the surety that's out there uh, is really made to give the incentive uh, for another party to make sure that these folks come back mm -hmm. to court uh, when they're summoned back. So okay. I wasn't surprised that there was some bond set. Uh, my, my guess is if they don't make it, it'll be it'll be lowered at some point uh, in the future. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Michael Moore, Shan Wu, good to see you both, gentlemen. Thanks so much.